I'm Rantasmo, and Romy and Michelle need more gay. If I had to describe Romy and Michelle's high school reunion in one word, it would probably be quotable. Oh my god, I hate throwing up in public. Me too! Do you have some sort of businesswoman special? Let's fold scarves! It was probably the mean girls of its generation in terms of quotable gay cult classics all about female friendship. By decade, it goes mean girls, Romy and Michelle, Heathers. I know it might seem weird to label Mean Girls or Romy and Michelle as cult classics, since they were both mainstream and successful and made about a million billion dollars. One of them even inspired a made-for-TV prequel that I'm not going to talk about. But they've also attracted a localized subculture of rabid fandom, especially within the gay community. I believe the definition of a cult film has evolved with the internet age. And on some level, animated GIFs on Tumblr are the new midnight screenings. Take that as you will. The protagonists in Romy and Michelle, played by Mira Sorvino and Lisa Kudrow, Lisa Kudrow, are a bit notable in that they're portrayed in a rather negative light. They're dumb, shallow, petty, Romy has this weird accent. We are gonna go back there and blow them away. In almost any other movie, they'd probably end up being the bad guys. Except for Clueless. And Legally Blonde. And okay, shut up. This was one of the early attempts at giving the old Valley Girl archetype some depth and pathos, and I'd say it pulls that part off pretty well. The basic premise is that Romy and Michelle decide to go to their class of 1987 high school reunion, but lie about their professional life, telling everyone that they invented post-its. The story basically amounts to your standard revenge fantasy. The one where you finally confront the person who made fun of you in high school, who has conveniently not changed at all in personality since graduation, bitch him out real good, do a dance, and then fly away in a helicopter with a bisexual Scotsman. At the end of the day, it's your essence that matters. I'm coming. Oh, Alan. <laughs> so am I. What's really interesting is that even though much of this movie was intended to be a loving tribute to the 80s, from a modern perspective, it sort of comes across like a knowing parody of the 90s. Some of the scenes set in the movie's present day seem prophetically self-aware, almost like it's a period piece. Hey, if anybody needs to make a call, I've got a phone. <laughs> That's not to say this is a smart movie, or even a terribly well-structured movie. Like, basically the entire middle third of the movie turns out to be an extended dream sequence that you could completely remove from the script and lose nothing in terms of story. Keep in mind that the real version of events includes a spontaneous choreographed dance scene and a goddamn helicopter. And I have kind of a hard time suspending disbelief during these flashbacks to high school. Oh, he's so cute. He is cute. Really cute. He's 31. And message-wise, the film doesn't have a whole lot to really say apart from the incredibly risky and divisive themes of be yourself and friendship is important. This is, however, a really funny movie. And some of its funniest moments come in that extraneous dream sequence. I'm the Mary! I'm the... you're pasty hag on a deathbed! Also worth mentioning is our favorite chain-smoking maven of the 90s, Janine Garofalo, at her most Garofoli. This is so weird! I didn't know you were living in L.A. Well, now that you know, will we be getting together a lot? I especially like the extreme lengths her character is willing to go to just for the sake of snark. And sometimes snark is enough. As far as Distaff's slightly classier versions of Dumb and Dumber go, you could do a lot worse than Romy and Michelle. I can only hope that my high school reunion will be as awesome. And that Nightcrawler will be there. Yoda!